Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to answer a common question is how to detect if your near-infrared bulbs are working. Now a lot of times people will get concerned because they notice that half of their bulbs are not working, they're not emitting any visible brightness, but that's because those are the near-infrared bulbs that are not visible to the human eye. But even if you know that, then you need to check, are they actually working? How do you know they're actually on if you can't see them with your eye? So we're gonna go through a lot of the top different ways to tell if your near-infrared bulbs are working. There's pros and cons to different types, so maybe you wanna do a couple different ways of checking that we'll go through in this video, so that way you can be sure your near-infrared bulbs are working. Now the first thing we do, the easiest thing we do, is that we switch to just the near-infrared mode. And if you're in a dark enough room, you should be able to see this kind of purplish, whitish glow that's coming from the near-infrared bulbs. That's because cameras will pick up that near infrared as this kind of color. So you're seeing this on my camera. You can also do this with a lot of Android phones and you can see actually my Android phone is picking it up very well. But I heard that there's a recent complication that a lot of the newer Apple phones will have a near infrared filter on them. And so I have this little optical filter that you can see kind of gets rid of that that visual effect that you can see the bulbs. So you don't get to see a lot of that purplish hue again. So basically this kind of filter is built into a lot of the phones. You can't remove it, so then you don't have any way of checking the near infrared now. But you can see this filter actually highlights something different. Now it's showing us what our vis visible eye can see. And you see some of my LEDs are glowing a little bit red. And that's because of the 830 nanometer LEDs. Some of those LEDs like 830 and 810, I notice you get a visual kind of a dull kind of redness to it. Because part of the tail end of that spectrum is going to be visible red. So that's the second way to check is that sometimes you can just kind of look into the LEDs themselves and you should see kind of a reddish glow. But again, you might not see that with the 850s. Usually I can see it pretty consistently with the 810s and the 830s because they're a little bit closer to the visible spectrum. So those are the first two ways. Sometimes you can see it through a camera or you can see the reddish kind of glow from them. Then another quick way is that there's usually an indicator light that tells you if the near infrared setting is on. So that's always helpful to check if your near infrared indicator light is on and working. Then you can also check the wattage that's being consumed if you know something about how much consumed power your device should be doing. Like this is our vector panel that should be about 15 watts. So if it's pulling about seven and a half watts, then we know half of the power is, is being drawn to the near infrared bulbs. So that checks out. So if you get this kind of cheap kilowatt, it's handy to have around the house to check your appliances, then that's a good way to check your consuming the power for the near infrared LEDs. Now, a lot of people will say that you can subjectively kind of feel some heat from your LEDs, and generally that could be true. Sometimes the device itself warms up, but a lot of our devices are low enough power to be proper photobiomodulation devices that are non-thermal to the human skin. Um, so that way, you don't always feel the heat immediately, but you do sometimes feel the device itself is warming up and that's an indicator that it's pulling the right amount of power. Or sometimes if you have a high intensity LED panel that's basically a fancy heat lamp, then you might feel some heat coming from those bulbs. Then naturally, if you bought some sort of solar power meter because you want to check the intensity, uh, and obviously you, you would use the solar power meter with one of our correction factors on our blogs to divide the intensity by the right factor. But if you hold up this to just your near infrared bulbs, then you should be able to see a response because obviously it's measuring that near infrared intensity. So obviously that's a very good way to confirm that there is some near infrared output by holding this solar power meter up to one of the near infrared bulbs. Then I have a fun new way that's a cheap way of checking if near infrared LEDs are working. We've got a liquid crystal sheet behind the panel that is kind of one of those mood things that measures your heat and it will respond to the heat by changing colors. So we can aim the panel and aim the near infrared at it and see if we get a color response. So that way we don't have to rely on our subjective feeling of heat. We could try to aim it at one of these mood sheets. So let's take a look if that works. So we do see those spots forming, the green and red spots. So we can see each of those spots corresponds to one of the near infrared bulbs. So maybe this is a fun way to confirm that you've got near infrared being emitted because it's warming up one of these mood sheets, this liquid crystal sheet. 
So there we have it. We have seven different ways of checking if near infrared light is working. We can check it through a camera, check it if you see any redness in the glow from your own eyes, check if the indicator lights are on, check the power consumption, check it with a power meter, check it subjectively if you feel heat, or check it on a liquid crystal sheet. Uh, hopefully that helps. Let us know if you have any other tips for finding if near infrared is working.